Hi there, I'm Shelly Gray and back to school is almost upon us and I know many of you are wondering how you are going to handle your math instruction this year, um, particularly with respect to basic facts in your classroom, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now um, I know many of you are familiar with my math stations but I just wanted to make a very, very informal video just to let you know exactly how they work. Um, I get a lot of questions just regarding the math stations, how, how you can incorporate them into your classroom, how they work to uh, reach all students at the same time. Um, so I'm just sitting here in my backyard with my phone making a very, very amateur video <laughs> and I, I hope this serves to help you understand how these stations can work for you in your classroom. So just a little bit of a backstory first. Um, the multiplication station was the very first math station that I came out with and I'll give you a little bit of a backstory on how that began. So my first year teaching I taught grade three and four students. Um, I got to the multiplication part of the curriculum and um, realized that some of my students already had background knowledge of multiplication and some didn't even know what it meant. So I had to figure out a way that I could best reach every student in my classroom and feel like I was appropriately challenging all of them at the same time, which can be, as you know, a tricky thing. So what I did um, that year, I made something that I called at the time the multiplication box. So I basically printed off a whole bunch of random activities off of the internet and I leveled them and I put them into a box and I got the students to work through at their own speed and at their own pace. Um, it, was, it was not a very polished version of the multiplication station at that point. Uh, about a week into using it in my classroom, Suddenly, um, magic happened, and students started begging me to work on this. They'd finish, you know, other work, and they'd ask, "Can we go work on the multiplication box?" Um, in math class, all of them were engaged the entire time that they were working on it. Even my students that weren't typically all that engaged in in school, in uh, you know, in any part of school. Um, anyways, it was it was rather magical, and I found myself I became uh, more of a facilitator and less of a teacher. I was able to kind of stand back and watch all these students regulating their own learning and being responsible for their own learning and highly highly engaged at the same time. So over the years, I refined that system a few times. I changed the orders that I taught the multiplication fact in. I um, made, of course, all my own activities that incorporated more strategic learning and I came up with the uh, what I currently call the multiplication station. Now, um, I know many of you have used it already, but for those of you who haven't, um, I do also have now, um, last year I wrote some other stations. So I have also now stations for addition, subtraction, and division uh, for multiple grade levels. Now just a quick overview of how these stations work. So I'll just give you a quick picture of what, so this is the subtraction station, if you can see it there. Sorry, this is very amateur with my iPhone. <laughs> um, so I put all my materials into a plastic bin like this one. Uh, some teachers, depending on how many students you have, uh, you're going to find that you need a bigger bin or maybe you need to use two bins because you're going to have activities enough for your entire class in this bin. So what students do is they go to the bin and this is all at their own pace by the way. So they have the freedom to move as fast or as slow as they need to um, and be challenged at a level that's appropriate for them. So they go to the bin and they get the first activity um, out of a file folder. And sorry, I'll show you how the folders are all labeled with a number letter code. And they get the first activity and they complete it on their own. And all of the activities are also labeled so it's very easy for students to follow. So they all have that same number letter code on the activity. When they're finished, they go back to the, to the station. They grab an answer key, which you will have prepared already on uh, laminated colored paper, hopefully, so that it stands out from all the rest. And they take that back to their seat and they self-check. When they're done self-checking that activity, they move on to the next activity. And there's typically maybe five to seven activities in each level. So what they do, this it's the same routine. They do the activity, they self-check, they fix up their mistakes, and then they move on to the next one. When they complete a level, they are going to come to you and tell you that they are ready for a test. Now the test is um, barely a test. It's a quick oral assessment of the strategies and the facts in that level. Now I stress 
strategies more than facts because these math stations are really more about mental math, strategic thinking than just about memorizing the facts. Um, I strongly, strongly believe in mental math strategies, in understanding number and knowing how to manipulate numbers to figure something out rather than just simple memorization. Um, not that I don't think there's not a place for memorization as well, but I do like to stress the strategies and um, I hope that's what you're doing in your classroom as well. So you give them a very quick oral test. This takes anywhere between 30 seconds and maybe two minutes. And uh, if, they, if you feel that their understanding of the strategies is where it should be, then they move on to the next level. And this just keeps going until students work their way through the entire station. Um, now, there's a few reasons. I find almost every day I get teachers telling me that um, you know their students beg them to do this and they've never seen their class so engaged. Um, I had, I've, I've had a couple teachers tell me you know that in 20 or 30 years of teaching they've never seen their class um, so engaged in math facts as they have when they're using the math stations or that finally in you know for the first time in 20 years every single student in their class knows their facts. Now the reason that this is so motivating for kids is because it incorporates just some very simple principles of student engagement that you probably use in your classroom all the time. Um, and those are power, fun, and freedom. So power is the big one uh, for me. Students need to be, they need to feel in control of their own learning and with math stations they feel completely in control and really they are. They are controlling the speed that they move, they are doing their self-checking, they are assessing themselves um, to see if they think they're ready for an oral assessment yet or not. They're really in full control and that really is what I feel is the secret sauce of the math stations. Um, it's also just fun and freedom, they, you know, that kind of goes along with the power thing as well. So that is, in a nutshell, what math stations are. Some benefits that you're going to find right away are that you, as a teacher, are going to become more of a facilitator and less of a teacher. So you'll find yourself able to kind of stand back and watch all this great stuff happening in your classroom. You'll see students that know exactly what they need to do and when they need to do it. You'll see students that feel confident, that finally feel successful. Maybe students who have never had that feeling of success before will finally experience that. Um, you're just going to really see great things happening. Uh, the other wonderful thing for you as a teacher is that marking is, you know, next to nothing with this for you because the students are, they're in charge. They're doing the work. It's less work for you. You are making sure that everything goes well, uh, but they are doing the work, which is always a good thing. Um, so I think that kind of covers it for today. I do have more complete explanations on all of the math stations that are posted on Teachers Pay Teachers. You can read through the, the complete description of each station just to see exactly what you're getting. I encourage you to read through some of the feedback as well. Um, you'll see feedback from thousands of teachers saying how they've used it you know, with homeschool students, with special ed students, in their resource rooms, with older students, grade 5, 6, 7, or 5th, 6, 7th grade that still don't know their facts. This is working for them as as well so you'll just you'll read some great stuff and hopefully um, things that will help you decide if this is right for you in your classroom or not thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day